very good morning all of you at the outset i welcome all my students for my subject on design of stage structural elements 18 cb 61 friends i was discussing about uh, the importance of plastic method of analysis in the previous class so we have seen some of the definitions related to plastic analysis advantages and disadvantages of plastic analysis compared to elastic method of analysis and we have appreciated as to what the codes of practices say about uh, the assumptions as far as the plastic method of analysis is concerned so today i'll be introducing to the concept of uh, pulley plastic moment of the section now consider a cross section as shown in the figure and as i told you when the cross section plastifies where the moment on the beam is mp the distribution of the stress across the cross section will be something like this where each and every fiber in tension as well as in compression will attain the yield stress fy and the spread is almost constant and corresponding to this particular uh, situation the resisting capacity of the beam is referred to as fully plastic moment capacity or the plastified capacity of the section so kindly say here once the section plastifies we have seen in the previous class that the neutral axis of the fully plastified section which divides the stress distribution into tension and compression and that neutral axis of the fully plastified section if you extend it onto the cross section cross section of the beam then that exactly divides the cross section into two parts if the total area of the cross section is a the area of the section above this axis and below this axis are equal and hence this particular axis is also referred to as the equal area axis the equal area axis is nothing but the axis on the cross section which is the extension of the neutral axis of the fully plastified section and that axis divides the cross section into two equal parts now with this uh, concept it is always be easy to determine an expression for the fully plastic moment capacity of the section in fact there are two forces one is the compressive force as you can see here and that compressive force passes through the centroid of the top section if you take the top section as tension so this is the centroidal axis of the top cross section and similarly we have the centroidal axis of the bottom section below the equal area axis as i have shown in this dark point so the two forces compressive force and the tensile forces as far as the top and bottom sections are concerned due to the distribution of uh, this type of a stress uh, is uh, nothing but the compressive force passing through this point and the tensile force passing through this particular point and what is the distance of uh, the point where the compressive force is assumed to be acting on the section that is at a distance y1 bar with respect to the equal area axis and similarly the point where the centroid of the bottom area comes into picture and that is acting at a stress of y2 bar as far as the equal area axis is concerned now we have the two forces c and t separated by a distance y1 bar plus y2 bar i need to take the moment of the compressive force and the tensile force about the equal area axis so the compressive force c into this distance that is y1 bar the tensile force t into again this distance in other words since these two forces are equal and opposite so any one of the force multiplied by the distance between the points where these two forces are acting so that is y1 bar plus y2 bar the same thing i have put it here in the form of an equation mp fully plastic moment of the section is nothing but fy into area the top area and of course that is equal to the bottom area and the distance of the centroid that is y1 bar and y2 bar so if you take that area a by 2 outside it is fy into a by 2 into y1 plus y2 in fact it is y1 bar plus y2 bar it's a very simple equation 
So that will give you the fully plastic moment capacity of the section. In fact, this equation can be derived also. How that can be done? So kindly see the total compressive force C is equal to the total tensile force T. The force is nothing but stress into area of the section. Fy into A1, where A1 is the top area, that is equal to Fy into A2, where A2 is the bottom area. And also we know that A1 is equal to A2 because the section is the equal area axis. So obviously the sum of the top and bottom area, A1 plus A2 is the total area. And with this A1 equal to A2 equal to of the total area that is A by 2. The plastic moment of the section MP is nothing but kindly see this F1 into A1 is the force corresponding to the top portion of the cross section into its distance with respect to the equal area axis. Similarly, the bottom force F1 into A2 into the corresponding distance Y2. If you further simplify this equation, it is equal to F y into A by 2 and of course uh, Y1 plus Y2 within the bracket we will be having. Now in this particular equation, F y I have put it as it is A1 by 2 into Y1 plus Y2. I will be calling that as Zp. So Zp is nothing but A1 by 2 into Y1 plus Y2. So this is where one of the property of the cross section will be able to get it with respect to the equal area axis. So 50% of the area or half of the area into the centroidal distances of the top area and the bottom area and its summation. And this value is constant for any given section. So this constant is referred to as the plastic modulus of the completely yielded section. And it is defined as the combined statistical moment combined statical moment of the cross-sectional areas above and below the neutral axis or the equal area axis. But here the neutral axis means the neutral axis of the fully plastified section. So it is the resulting modulus of the completely plastified section. So with this, uh, so we will be able to determine the value of Zp for any type of section, I section, T section, channel section, or any of the regular cross sections in the form of uh, rectangle, square, triangle, circular and these are all some of the simple problems uh, you expect uh, in the examination and many of these things needed to be worked out which you will be seeing in the subsequent classes. Now the fully plastified cross section as I mentioned it is the full plastic moment MP of the section and is defined as the maximum moment of resistance of a fully plastified section or a yielded cross section. In fact, this is what the formula we have seen in the previous slide as well. Now coming to the analysis of the beam subjected to any type of loading. So in limit state method, we call it as limit state of laterally restrained beams. We will see about this laterally restrained beams in detail in the subsequent classes. So it is just a simply supported beam, so it is undergoing bending in the vertical direction which is the plane of bending. In fact, there is no lateral bending as far as the behavior is concerned. So this is where a laterally restrained beam comes into picture and more about this I uh, will be discussing in the subsequent classes. Now as far as the analysis of a laterally restrained beam from the limit state point of view is concerned. So we need to consider the following limit states, limit state of flexure or the limit state of bending, limit state of shear, limit state of bearing and limit state of serviceability. So any beam subjected to load will be subjected to bending action and obviously we have the rate of change of bending moment coming into picture between any two cross sections resulting in uh, the presence of the shear force. So we have a defined distribution of the shear stress along the span. So obviously we need to design for the limit state of shear and also we have the problem of uh, bearing. So the concentrated stress uh, wherever we have the support on that support uh, the concentrated loads are acting. So the section is subjected to bearing effect. We need to discuss about uh, the limit state of bearing as well. And lastly, so another important limit state which is the limit state of serviceability. 
to understand more about the limit state of flexure so we need to consider a simple beam and see what happens to the behavior of the beam when the load is increased gradually till the beam fails so this is where uh, the behavior of the beam in bending comes into picture now for this i have taken a beam of span l as you can see here so it is a simply supported beam subjected to a central concentrated load w so i'll be applying the minimum possible load and then the load is increased uh, gradually till the load reaches the maximum value that is w collapse at which the beam is uh, undergoing failure the moment corresponding to that is represented as the fully plastified moment and with that moment the beam has undergone substantial deformation before it fails now this is uh, what the beam is and this is uh, what the centroidal axis i have taken a small portion of the beam in the vertical direction so that is where the two section of the beam comes into picture that is what i have represented uh, in this particular figure and also see here uh, the beam is subjected to moment m as you can see here so this is what the neutral axis of the beam is and uh, one of the portion above the neutral axis will be subjected to compression and if you see the portion below it will be subjected to tension so obviously a portion of the beam in compression portion of the beam in tension we are able to see here and obviously we have the neutral axis as you can see here the distance of the extreme fiber from the neutral axis is represented as c and the distance of any fiber say this one which is at a distance z from the neutral axis where the depth of the section is taken as h or small d depending on the situation now when the beam bends uh, of course you will be able to see the the bending profile of the beam and of course we have the radius of curvature as you can see here and this is the point where uh, the rotation of the beam takes place so this is the center of the rotation or the axis of the rotation and many of these things we must have studied in strength of material and if you see the deflected shape and at the support if you draw a tangent so there exists at an angle so that is where the slope of the beam to the left support and similarly the slope of the beam to the right support comes into picture so the radius of curvature is represented as r and the reciprocal of the radius of curvature is just the curvature of the beam which is represented as rho so this is just the basic as far as the bending behavior of the beam is concerned now i will be introducing to one more uh, concept so kindly see the same beam subjected to moment and uh, this is what the center of curvature as i mentioned and with respect to the central axis which is passing through the b so the longitudinal centroidal axis when it bends so corresponding to that so the distance is represented as r and this is what uh, the infinite zonal section which you have seen in the previous slide and the width of this section as we can say is nothing but mp at the top and similarly nq at the bottom and if you take any fiber over the depth uh, say for example it is uh, ef so the length of the fibers as far as mp is concerned nq is concerned or eq is concerned is same but they are curved in nature so this curved length can also be idealized uh, as if it is a straight line because the curvature is uh, not too much but since this is uh, the curvature the radius of curvature is r subtending an angle of theta so the length of this curved part is nothing but r into theta so this is what we have seen in the engineering mechanics so this r is the radius of curvature and theta is the angle subtended by these two sections hence theta is equal to some constant divided by r and what is this 1 by r so 1 by r is nothing but the curvature of the beam which you have seen earlier so the curvature of the beam is phi k is constant and obviously theta the angle subtended between the two section is directly proportional to the curvature 
pi naught. Now with this, we'll be able to derive uh, one important equation and we'll be able to conclude few things as a part of uh, this discussion. So bending of beam, so we have seen the bernoulli euler equation, which is also referred to as the straight beam formula. And that is uh, m divided by i is equal to f divided by y is equal to e divided by r. So m by i is equal to f by y is what the first two part of the equation and the m, the bending moment to which the beam is subjected to is given by f into, if you take this y to the other side, it is y at the bottom and i at the top. So i being in the numerator, it is the moment of inertia of the section with respect to the horizontal centroidal axis and that is called as i z. So divided by y max, so distance of any fiber but the distance with respect to the extreme fiber is what is being mentioned here. So if you increase the load in such a way that the stress at the extreme fiber is uh, elastic, then the corresponding moment is referred to as the elastic moment. And obviously that elastic moment is given by the elastic stress into I divided by Y max. That is the property of the cross section when the stress distribution is elastic in nature. And that property is referred to as the section modulus. So Fe into section modulus, since it is the section modulus of the elastic cross section, it is represented as ZE. So Me is equal to Fe into ZE. And if we extend the load further and further, where the moment increases beyond Me, reaches a value My, and later on the spreading of the yield over the depth of the section happens. And at some point in time, the section will be subjected to elastic plastic stress distribution. And finally, the entire cross section yields. So which is the fully plastified section of the beam. And the moment carrying capacity of that, as we have seen in the previous uh, slides, it is EMP. And in that situation, the stress will become FY. And of course, the property of the section to be considered is ZP. So in fact, the derivation of this equation also we have seen in the previous uh, slides. So this plastic capacity of the section corresponding to the full plastification is referred to as the fully plastified moment. And this is what the concept being used in plastic method of analysis. As far as the elastic method of analysis is concerned, ME is equal to FE into ZD. That is where working stress method comes into picture. Otherwise, MP is equal to FY into ZP as far as plastic stress method of analysis and design is concerned. Now we know that M by I is equal to E by R. So that is the other part of the equation, bending equation. And 1 by R is nothing but uh, phi. So that is where the curvature comes into picture. R is the radius of curvature. So this is what we have seen in the previous slide also. This is what uh, the picture. And now here, the moment is directly proportional to, if you take this i to the other side, it is uh, ei, where the flexural rigidity of the section comes into picture. As the flexural rigidity increases, the moment carrying capacity of the section also increases. Now the moment is directly proportional to flexural rigidity multiplied by phi. The phi is nothing but reciprocal of the radius of curvature, which is the curvature. So flexural rigidity into angle of rotation of the beam. So it is nothing but uh, the moment carrying capacity. And also we have seen in the previous, uh, 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 previous diagram, the value of theta is uh, nothing but k into phi. So this angle theta is directly proportional to the curvature. And with that, uh, so theta is equal to k into curvature, which is constant obviously theta is proportional to phi. So theta is the angle of rotation of the section which is proportional to the curvature of the beam. It is always be possible to express the moment as a function of the angle of rotation. Then it is called as the moment rotation relationship. We can also express the moment as a function of curvature. So this is what is referred to as the moment curvature relationship or the moment rotation relationship where the rotation is directly proportional to the curvature.
Now we have seen the idealized uh, stress strain diagram as far as the steel is concerned. So this has been discussed uh, in detail in the previous classes. So we can identify few salient points. So from this particular point where the stress is zero, where the stress is varying linearly up to the maximum, where the stress is yield stress. So right from zero going up to Fy, the stress is directly proportional to strain. So this is where the elastic region of the stress strain diagram comes into picture. Of course, the idealized stress strain diagram. Now this is the point where the extreme fiber of the section has attained the yield stress. But if you take any point below that on the linear part, the extreme fiber stresses are less than the yield stress. The point two corresponding to the situation where the extreme fiber stress is the yield stress. Now from point two to point three, the continuous increase in the deformation and also the spreading of the yield over the cross section is taking place. But if you take the point three where certain number of fibers at the extreme fibers and yielded, but still you have the central region which is elastic in nature. So obviously, so this is the point corresponding to elastic plastic stress distribution of the cross section. If you increase the moment further and further, so then the entire cross section of the beam undergo full plastification and the point for corresponding to the fully plastified situation of the beam. So if you see the distribution of the stresses across the section corresponding to 1, 2, 3 and 4, we will be able to appreciate in the subsequent slides. Now what is 1? It is the elastic distribution of the stress. What is that elastic distribution of the stress? At the extreme top, the stress is F1 less than F5 and so is the case at the bottom. So both in tension and compression, the extreme fiber stresses are less than the heat stress. And obviously stress is proportional to strain. So the extreme fiber strain and the strains of any fiber towards the centroid is also linear and the distribution of the strain is uh, very similar to the distribution of the stress. But the extreme fiber strain and the extreme fiber stress is less than the corresponding yield values. So this is what is referred to as the distribution of stress and strain across the cross section corresponding to elastic bending situation. If you increase the load further, as I told you, the extreme fiber will reach the maximum stress. So that is where uh, the yield stress of the material comes into picture. Now since it is a doubly symmetric cross section where the distance of the extreme top and extreme bottom they are equal. So the stress at the top and bottom will be equal to F5. But all other stress below till the neutral axis it is less than F5. And this particular situation is referred to as the yield moment capacity of the section. So corresponding to this type of distribution of stress, if you see the distribution of the strain, it is more or less similar. So the extreme fiber will have the yield strain and the extreme fiber will have the yield stress. Now if you see the situation corresponding to point 3, so this is the point 3, where you have that point 3 on the horizontal part of the elastoplastic stress strain behavior and corresponding to that 3, so we have the distribution looking something like this. So in the previous case, only the extreme fiber at the top, extreme fiber at the bottom has just yielded. That is what FY and FY is concerned. Otherwise, entire cross section is not yielded except the top and bottom fiber. Now if you see this particular uh, section, so we have the few fibers from the top and also few fibers from the bottom have yielded. So that is where the spreading of the yield is uh, taking place towards the center and that is what is referred to as the plastic part of the top section and plastic part of the bottom section. Still we have a substantial depth of the section near the center where it is elastic in nature. So this is where the elastic plastic distribution of the stress across the cross section comes into picture. But you see here, once the maximum stress in the extreme fiber reaches the heat stress. There is no increase in stress further, but 
the fibers below which are under stressed they will be subjected to yield stress and that type of a spreading of the yield that takes place towards the neutral axis but on the other hand if you see the fiber which is already subjected to the yield stress so that fiber continues to yield further and further and thereby the strain of the extreme fiber simply keep on increases at the constant value of the stress f5 then similarly in the bottom portion also more or less the same type of thing happens so the distribution of the strain is always be like this where the extreme fiber will undergo continuous straining but on the other hand as for the stress is concerned the spreading of the yield takes place towards the center of the cross section so this is the only difference we need to appreciate and whatever the portion of the beam at the top and bottom that has yielded so that is being shown in the hatched manner as you can see here now squarely see what is this particular point so this is actually the centroidal axis this is the centroidal axis of the hatched part so the portion which is completely yielded is assumed to be located at this particular point so this is the point where the force corresponding to the plastified part comes into picture with respect to the top and similarly with respect to the bottom so this is the point where the force is assumed to be concentrated but you can see the central part uh, which is not hatched uh, is the one where the distribution of the stress is elastic in nature if you increase the load on the beam the moment on the beam also increases and the cross section where you are looking for the bending moment and that bending moment increases further now kindly see the situation corresponding to four and we know what that uh, four is so that is the point somewhere here corresponding to elastoplastic stress strain curve and corresponding to that we notice that the entire cross section of the beam is uh, plastified so that is where the distribution of the stress over the entire section is f5 and of course uh, to the top it is f5 maybe compression and similarly to the bottom it is again f5 the same distribution but it is tension in nature but what is the strain distribution the strain distribution is exactly similar to what happened in the situation of 3 where the strain is continuously increasing as far as the extreme fibers are concerned so already in case 3 the extreme fiber has a stress much beyond the yield strain and c corresponding to the situation 2 where the extreme strain is exactly equal to the yield strain but corresponding to point 1 the extreme strain is less than the yield strain here it is equal to the yield strain and if you see here it is more than the yield strain and corresponding to the point 4 it is substantially more than epsilon y so that is where the continuous deformation continuous training of uh, each and every fiber happens as per the cross section is concerned but the distribution of the stress uh, only changes and corresponding to the situation 4 the entire cross section is yielded but we have the continuous deformation of that particular cross section and which is the continuous straining of the section now corresponding to these two four situations if you see how exactly the distribution of the stress is uh, changing so this is all uh, the stress kindly see the stress at the top is less than the yield stress here it is exactly equal to the yield stress not only in the top but also in the bottom that is where the point 2 comes into picture and if you see that point 2 this one the extreme fiber at the top extreme fiber at the bottom the stress is just the yield stress but otherwise at the extreme top and extreme bottom the stress is substantially less than the yield stress so that stress which is less than the yield stress i am not bothered but the stress which is equal to the yield stress is what i need to mark on the cross section so here one cross section at the top and bottom has just yielded but what is the situation corresponding to three now here corresponding to three certain number of fibers at this particular cross sections have yielded further towards the centroidal axis and if you take a section which is either to the left or to the right but you have less number of fibers at the extreme undergoing yielding but if you still take one section still away either to the left or to the 
right then we have few fibers at the top and few fibers at the bottom have yielded and still we will be able to identify one point at the top and one point at the bottom as far as this section is concerned where the yielding has just started so what this particular uh, hatched part in the black color represent so that represent uh, the portion of the beam at the top where it has completely yielded in compression similarly we have the portion corresponding to tension which has completely yielded now if you see the situation over certain length so you will be able to make out that certain portion of the beam towards the top and bottom have yielded but the depth of the yielding is maximum near the center and the depth keep on decreases and at some point only the extreme fibers have just yielded but what is the situation going to be corresponding to the four where the entire cross section is plastifying now kindly see my dear friends uh, this is what the center of the cross section where the entire section has yielded each and every fiber has the yield stress but if you take one section say either to the left or to the right uh, only few fibers from top and bottom have yielded and if you go further away from the point where the moment is maximum still lesser number of fibers have yielded to the top and bottom and still we will be able to find one section where the extreme top and extreme bottom has just yielded a similar type of behavior you will be able to see even to the other portion of the cross section is concerned now what i want to tell you at this uh, uh, level is that so when the beam completely yields uh, it is not that the yielding is happening uh, at one particular cross section the yielding is happening uh, over certain length of the beam and if this is what the length of the beam simply supported beam having a span of l so substantial length of the beam will be undergoing yielding as far as uh, the plastification is concerned and this particular portion which has plastified is behaving like a hinge and because of this uh, the rotation of the beam is uh, taking place so this is where uh, so you will be able to see the bending moment diagram so this is the variation of the bending moment diagram as far as a simply supported beam is concerned and this is what the maximum value of the bending moment corresponding to so that level of a load and when the load is increased the moment also increases as far as that section is concerned the moment is increasing further and further and further and the maximum moment corresponding to the situation 4 is what this particular value is and that is what the fully plastified moment capacity of the section so corresponding to point 1 it is the elastic moment corresponding to point 2 it is the yield moment where only the top and bottom extreme fibers have reached the yield and the moment corresponding to the third bend moment diagram is the elastoplastic bending capacity where partially the cross sections are yielded at the extreme top and bottom but still uh, some portion near the center of the section is still elastic but the point four the entire depth of the uh, bending moment diagram is what the fully plastified moment capacity and corresponding to that particular uh, situation the spreading of the yield not only over the depth of the cross section at different sections and over certain length of the beam also you will be able to see and appreciate so this is uh, what is referred to as the formation of the plastic hinge now if you see the situation with respect to the curvature diagram how the curvature of the beam is uh, changing so as we move from point 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 so in other words the same beam so this is a bending moment diagram and also you know the deflect deflected profile so the deflected profile and the curvature and the slope at the ends so these are all the parameters i discussed earlier and how that curvature is changing and what is the radius of curvature that also you know it now corresponding to point one kindly recollect this is the point one on the elastic portion of the idealized stress strain diagram corresponding to the onset of yielding so this is a point corresponding to elastoplastic stress, re stress distribution across the section and this is the point corresponding to fully plastified uh, 
capacity of the section where the entire cross section has yielded. So how exactly the entire length of the beam has undergone uh, rotation? The nature of the curvature corresponding to elastic condition, the nature of the curvature corresponding to the onset of the yielding, nature of the curvature of the beam corresponding to elastoplastic distribution of the stress at the section where the moment is maximum and similarly when the section completely plastifies how the beam will undergo rotation. So that is what I was uh, discussing and that is what this particular diagram is all about. So the curvature is increasing. In other words, the slope of the beam near the support is also increasing. And if you see the curvature of this particular portion of the beam, that is 1 by R, so that is also increasing. And this is increasing further corresponding to uh, the point 2 where the section has just yielded. And this is where the curvature is changing drastically, that is what you are going to see. And the curvature is also taking a different direction. So corresponding to elastoplastic and for the fully plastified situation the curvature of the beam is increasing continuously as far as that particular portion of the beam which is just started to yield where the plastic hinge has formed. So that is where uh, the sudden increase in the curvature and an infinite increase in the curvature leading to the failure of the beam comes into picture as far as that plastic situation is concerned. So this is a situation where certain length of the beam is uh, completely plastified and corresponding to this particular situation and certain portion of the beam near the center undergo continuous rotation and where the curvature is changing from positive to negative. So that is where a positive curvature is taking a opposite direction and in the opposite direction the curvature is increasing continuously means uh, so the beam as a whole over certain length uh, is plastifying leading to the failure and this particular situation of the beam corresponding to 4 is referred to as the mechanism. We will see more about this mechanism in the subsequent classes. Now if you take the same beam simply supported so let us see what uh, the deflection profile corresponding to the four conditions. Now as far as the condition one is concerned, the beam has just deflected and of course we have the slope at the end and some deflection and the deflection is uh, increased further and a substantial increase in the deflection as far as three is concerned that is where elastoplastic behavior comes into picture and if you see the deflection corresponding to four, it has become absolute maximum and corresponding to this deflection so the portion undergoes continuous deformation leading to the formation of plastic hinge and that is where the continuous rotation of the plastic hinge comes into picture now again uh, the same uh, uh, situation if you see with respect to the moment curvature uh, characteristic so as the load is increased the moment carrying capacity also increases the curvature of the beam is also increasing. So that is where the linear variation of the moment to curvature comes into picture. So that is happening up to a point. This is a point where the extreme fibers have just yielded. Now from this particular point onwards, if you see how the curvature is changing with respect to the moment, you are increasing the load on the beam. The moment is increasing, but the increasing in moment with respect to curvature is not linear and it is becoming non-linear. So as you can see here, it is increasing. So this is where uh, the spreading of the yield over the cross section is happening. More and more number of fibers from the extreme fiber is yielding. And this is where the situation, the entire depth of the beam has completely yielded. The starting from just the extreme fibers yielding to the situation where the entire depth of the cross section, where every fibers of the cross sections are yielded. So what is really happening as far as the moment carrying capacity of the section is concerned is the capacity is increasing continuously but in a non-linear manner and at the same time the curvature of the beam is also increasing continuously. So this is where the linear behavior of the moment to curvature where the extreme fibers having a stress less than the yield stress and from this point to this point uh, where the continuous spreading of the yield over the cross section 
where the beam as a whole over the span is resisting moment beyond MY up to MP comes into picture. And of course, after that, the continuous deformation of the plastic hinge comes into picture leading to the failure. So that is where we will be able to see the continuous deformation leading to mechanism formation and failure. So this is what is uh, referred to as the moment curvature relationship or the moment curvature characteristics of a simply supported beam. It is just the variation of the moment at a particular cross section and how that particular cross section undergo change in curvature as the load is increased gradually. Now let us introduce to one important uh, concept called as the shear factor. So this is uh, the factor which mainly depends on uh, the cross section of the beam. So we have different cross sections, square, rectangle, triangle, circular and of course if you take the road sections, so we have I sections, T sections, channel section, tubular sections and many such sections comes into picture and all these uh, sections do have a different factor as far as uh, their shapes are concerned. So that is where the shape factor comes into picture. Let us see what this particular shear factor in plastic method of analysis is. So the shear factor is the ratio of the plastic moment to the yield moment of the section. In fact, we have already seen in the previous slides as to what this plastic moment and how to calculate the plastic moment with respect to the equal area axis. And also we have seen what is the yield moment corresponding to the uh, neutral axis of the section that is where the elastic section modulus comes into picture. So thus the shear factor is nothing but MP divided by MY, the plastic section, the plastic moment to the yield moment. And also we know this, know that this plastic moment is FY into ZP and this yield moment is again FY into ZY, ZY or even ZZ because horizontal axis is represented, represented as ZZ as far as IS 800 is concerned but otherwise uh, in any of the strength of material problem obviously the horizontal axis is uh, many a times represented as yy so mp by my is nothing but zp divided by zy the shear factor is the property of the section which depends only upon the geometry of the cross section now what will happen to the shear factor as far as the rectangular section is concerned Kindly see the rectangular uh, section having a dimension B by D where B is the width of the section and the depth of the section is small d. If you take the horizontal axis which is passing through the centroidal axis, so it is actually the centroidal axis of the cross section but in fact we have seen uh, so this is what the axis uh, uh, which divides the cross section into two equal part because this is what the extended part of the plastic stress distribution. If you draw the plastic stress distribution, so the neutral axis of that uh, plastified section, if you extend it onto the cross section, so that is again passing through the centroid and thereby that axis divides the cross section into two equal parts. So one is the top area and the other is the bottom area which is 50% of the total area. Since the width is constant over the depth and the top depth is d by 2, and the bottom depth is another d by 2 as far as this uh, equal area axis is concerned or the centroidal axis is concerned and where exactly the centroid of the top area is located obviously that is at a distance off of the top depth so that is where d by 4 with respect to this centroid and another d by 4 with respect to the bottom centroid comes into picture now what is this uh, elastic moment of resistance that is me so that is nothing but uh, the elastic section modulus. The elastic section modulus is BD square by 6. So if you recall the moment of inertia with respect to the horizontal centroidal axis that is BD cube by 12 and uh, ZE is uh, I divided by Y max. The Y max is nothing but D by 2. So I divided by D by 2. BD cube by 12 divided by Y by 2 is nothing but Z with respect to the elastic section and that Z with respect to the elastic section is nothing but this BD square by 6 and that multiplied by FY is what the 
elastic modulus of the section. The plastic moment can be calculated by MP and of course uh, we have seen the formula for this in the previous uh, slides. So it is 50% uh, of the area. So what is the total area? So the B into D is the area. A by 2 if you recollect the formula. So it is BD by 2. So that is where uh, so this particular formula comes into picture. 2 B D by 2 into the distance of this point with respect to this d by 4 and of course we have another d by 4 means uh, it is nothing but d by 4 plus d by 4 otherwise it is 2 into d by 4 so that is what this 2 is one for the top portion and one for the bottom portion and this is what the area vd and uh, bd by 2 is a by 2 so a by 2 and the distance with respect to the top is d by 4 another distance is d by 4 so it is 2 times of d by 4 so if you simplify this so this is what the expression and finally we are going to get bd square by 4 into fy and that is nothing but zp into fy the shape factor by definition it is zp by zy or mp by my so obviously it is nothing but bd square by 4 whole upon bd square by 6 if we calculate it it is uh, 6 divided by 4 and that means it is 1.5 so the shape factor of a rectangle or cross section or even a square cross section about its uh, centroidal axis which is the symmetric axis which divides the section in a symmetric manner is 1.5 obviously the plastic moment mp is 1.5 times the yield moment capacity of the section so from mp so sorry from my going up to mp the variation of the uh, moment curvature becomes non-linear and a substantial non-linear part in the moment curvature relationship we will be able to say because of this 0.5 so what that particular 0.5 represent from my going up to mp so what this particular moment so we have is quite substantial so there is a substantial difference between the first yield moment to the fully plastified moment and that is what we are seeing here and this is 50 percent more compared to the yield moment so 1.5 times of my is what mp so there are cross sections where this distance is still higher where MP is substantially more than MY but if you take I sections where not much of area is available near the center so the difference between MY and MP keep on decreases. So that is where the shape factor of an I section is substantially smaller and smaller and of course it is more than 1 and many a times it is uh, close to 1.1 to something like 1.5. So 10 to 15 percent uh, excess of moment beyond yield is what the fully plastified moment capacity of the eye structure so there is not much of a difference uh, between my and mp now if you take an eye section where the web is very very small and assume that we have only two plates uh, kept at a distance d where the web is almost negligible so then there is no difference between my and mp so my is exactly equal to mp where we have only two plates separated by a distance and there is no web and if a small web comes into picture between the two plates which are the two flanges then mp is slightly higher compared to my and that's where the shape factor of 1.1 and going up to 1.15 comes into picture and if you have a solid cross sections in the form of a square or rectangle so we have a substantial area near the centroidal axis where mp is substantially more than my and also we have sections in the form of a triangle and of course rhombus where substantial cross-sectional area comes into picture near the centroidal axis and for such sections the shape factor is still more than 1.5 and it will go up to 2, 2.34 and things like that depending on the cross-section. So whatever we have seen as a shape factor so the explanation we will be able to see here. So what is this uh, shape factor, the significance? 
the ratio of the plastic modulus Zp to the elastic modulus Z is known as the shear factor S and will govern the point in the moment rotation curve when the non-linearity starts. So this is where the substantial portion of the non-linearity and a very small non-linearity part as far as size section is concerned comes into picture. Now for the theoretically ideal section in bending that is two flange plates connected by a web box insignificant thickness so this shear factor is uh, almost equal to one so when the material at the center of the section is increased the value of s increases and for a universal beam where it has certain thickness of the web the value is uh, 1.15 and it increases to 1.5 in case of rectangle and it increases further depending on the shape of the cross section now we can also see here I have taken uh, this particular uh, uh, combinations of the sketches uh, from uh, uh, Dugar textbook and uh, this is what uh, the rectangle whether it is a rectangle or a square whatever it is if it is something like this then the shear factor is constant and it is 1.5 so and if you have a tube so a tube of some diameter and where you have some thickness so it is generally taken as pi by 4 and sometimes if the thickness is uh, varying then a small variation in the value of the shear factor comes into picture. But if you have a triangular section, so irrespective of the type of the triangle, the value will be 2.34 and it is constant for a triangle. So this is where the maximum value of the shear factor comes into picture as far as certain conventional shapes are concerned. So probably students will be asked ask to select the answer as far as objective type questions are concerned. So which particular cross section is having the maximum shear factor. So please remember, so it is the triangle for which the shear factor is uh, 2.34 and uh, another cross section also you must have seen where the shear factor is uh, close to 1.7. So this is where uh, a tubular section comes into picture. And if you see another section which is like a rhombus where the total area near the centroid as far as the horizontal axis is concerned or even the vertical axis is concerned a substantial concentration of the area near the core of the uh, centroid is more and for sections for such sections the shear factor is always be higher but if you take uh, the i section in fact we have seen for the i section it varies from 1.1 going up to 1.15 and if you have a section something like this a white flange section with a strong axis it is close to 1.14 and if you keep the same i section in the form of a h something like this then the shear factor will be close to 1.5 so please remember some of these things and if you have any rolled section with varying thickness of the flange and web we need to calculate the shear factor and the value what you are going to get will be close to the values what i have represented here as far as i section is concerned in this particular form or maybe in this particular form what is the effect of uh, the shear factor on to the moment rotation relationship in fact the moment rotation relationship we have seen it but here the representation of the variation is uh, not with respect to the shear factor it is with respect to one upon the shear factor so that is where uh, 1 upon the shear factor equal to almost 1 comes into picture for an I section where the web is uh, having a negligible thickness. So since you have only two plates kept at some distance, so that is where uh, S is equal to 1 and 1 upon S is also equal to 1 and for that section, so there is no difference between the first yield moment to the fully plastified moment. So kindly see it is a linear variation of the moment curvature or even the moment rotation relationship a very small non-linearity comes into picture so that is where a small increase in the yield moment up to mp comes into picture and beyond that a continuous deformation of the cross section takes place but if you have a i section where substantial thickness of the web comes into picture that is what the behavior i was just mentioning but if we really do not have any web, then there is no curved part. So the difference between MY 
and MP is uh, almost uh, zero or negligible. So that is where we have the idealized uh, linear and uh, horizontal part comes into picture and that is what uh, the importance of uh, the two plates. With I section, a small change in uh, uh, moment from MY to MP comes into picture. But if you have a rectangular section, which I have seen in the previous slide, so we have a substantial non-linearity comes into picture. So after the first yield, the moment increases continuously and reaches EMP. And that increase in moment uh, is uh, definitely equal to 33% uh, more, sorry, it is 50% more compared to MY. Because we are comparing that with uh, 1 upon S, where uh, uh, yes, is 1.5 and 1 upon yes uh, is uh, 0.67. So 0.67 going up to 1. So this is two parts and this is one part. So compared to two part, one part increase is the 50% increase. So this is where 0.67 to 1. So 50% increase in the moment carrying capacity of a rectangular cross section. As per the fully plastified situation is concerned, from the instant of the extreme fibers just attaining the yield. And if you have an angle section, so where the shear factor is uh, still higher, going up to 1.8, so we have a substantial nonlinear uh, behavior coming into picture. So this is what uh, you need to appreciate uh, as far as the shear factor of the cross section is concerned and its influence on the variation of the moment and the corresponding rotation of the curvature of the beam. In fact, I have already discussed as to what this uh, plastic hinge is. So the plastic hinge is nothing but uh, the certain length of the beam uh, which is undergoing continuous uh, deformation. So that is where the rotation of the plastic hinge comes into picture. For all practical purpose, the plastic hinge is uh, represented as a point uh, on the beam itself from the point of analysis. But uh, the plastic hinge is not a point, uh, but it is uh, the substantial length of the beam undergoing the rotation. So at the plastic hinge, an infinitely large rotation can occur under a constant moment equal to the plastic moment of the section. Plastic hinge is defined as a yielded zone due to bending at which an infinite rotation can take place at a constant plastic moment MP of the section. So what is to be appreciated, my dear friends, is that the plastic hinge undergoes rotation, certain portion of the beam. But while undergoing rotation, that portion of the beam will have a resistance and that resistance is MP. And you must have seen hinge uh, in the analysis of beams uh, in engineering mechanics and that is a mechanical hinge. So that is the nature of the support and at that particular support, uh, the beam undergoes continuous rotation. So what the rotation the beam undergoes uh, at the rotation and what this hinge undergo rotation in a plastic beam, they are same as far as the rotation is concerned. But in a mechanical hinge, the portion of the beam rotates where the moment at the hinge is zero. But here on the other hand, uh, so in a plastic hinge, uh, the portion of the beam undergo rotation, but and that portion will have the internal resistance equal to plastic momentum. So theoretically, plastic hinges are assumed to form at points at which the plastic rotations occur. Thus, the length of the plastic hinge is considered as zero as far as the analysis is concerned, which you will be able to see in the subsequent slides. The values of moment at the adjacent section of the yield zone or more than the yield moment up to certain length x. So this is what uh, I was discussing uh, in the earlier slides and that particular length uh, over which we have the plastification happening is referred to as the length of the plastic hinge. And this is uh, what the length and that depends on the type of the beam and also it depends on what type of loading the beam is subjected to. And we will see this uh, plastic hinge uh, as far as a simply supported beam is concerned. I will just derive one uh, simple uh, formula. So that will represent uh, the length of the plastic hinge as far as a simply supported beam is concerned. So please uh, 
see this particular problem where the span of the simply supported beam is L and uh, subjected to a central concentrated load W. The cross section is such that width is small b and uh, the depth is h. And this is the longitudinal centroidal axis which divides the cross section into two parts. That is where the centroidal axis of the cross section comes into picture. And this is what the variation of the bending moment along the span, bending moment diagram. And at the time of plastification of the central portion, so we have the moment MP, fully plastified moment. Now corresponding to the fully plastified moment of the central cross section where you have applied the load, you can see the continuous yielding of the entire cross section. But if you go to the left and right over certain length, we see the plastification over certain depths from the top, but near the center, the portion is completely elastic. And as I mentioned, so this is the extreme top and extreme bottom to the left and similarly the extreme top and extreme bottom onto the other side so where we have the just yielding of the fiber so this particular length is uh, referred to as the length of the plastic hinge and if the length of the plastic hinge in this particular case of a simply supported beam if you take it as uh, x and we have the triangle bending moment distribution kindly see the triangle to the left so this is what the triangle with moment being zero moment at the center being mp and kindly see for a distance x by 2 to the left so we have the moment my in fact we have two similar triangles so one is the big triangle so another is uh, the small triangle so where uh, the two sides are uh, proportional so the triangles are symmetric in nature similar in nature and uh, from the two similar triangles so take the two ordinates mp of the big triangle divided by my of this small triangle so these two sides uh, will have uh, the ratio constant ratio with respect to the corresponding other two sides so one is uh, this particular length l by 2 corresponding to mp uh, another distance is this so this is nothing but l by 2 minus of x by 2 so l by 2 minus of x by 2 upon my and l by 2 upon mp so this is what you need to consider so that's what i have written here my divided by l by 2 minus of x by 2 as far as this small triangle is concerned should be equal to mp the fully plastified moment upon of the span that is l by 2 so if you take my divided by mp sub onto one side so it is l by 2 minus x by 2 upon l by 2 so you can simplify this uh, right side further l by 2 l by 2 goes to dots it is 1 minus of x by 2 minus of l by 2 which is nothing but x by l and that is further equal to l minus of x upon l please remember this particular thing so obviously so mp this is the mp and this is my and if you further simplify so l minus of x into mp and that is equal to L into MY. And now what is this uh, equation? So this is the equation as a function of L and X. And of course as a function of MP and MY. Now you know that in a fully plastified section. So we have this relation. MP is equal to fully plastic uh, uh, moment capacity is equal to plastic section modulus into FI. And MY is... Uh, elastic section modulus into fy and if you take the ratio of mp by my it is 1.5 it is the shear factor so this has been already discussed so in order to cancel mp so i need to change this my as a function of mp so what is my so my is nothing but uh, 2 by 3 of mp so if i write that my as 2 by 3 of mp so this mp this mp goes to dox and finally we have l minus of x is equal to two third of l so one min l minus of x equal to two third of l already you have l so x is equal to one third of l so thereby x is equal to l by three so what is the meaning so the length of the plastic hinge in a simply supported beam of span l carrying a central concentrated load w that is equal to one third of the span length 
So what is the portion of the beam which is really undergoing rotation as far as the plastic hinge is concerned? Though the plastic hinge is considered as a point as far as the analysis is concerned that is acting over certain length. If you have a beam of length 3 meter, so 3 meter is a substantial length of the beam. What is 3 meter by 3, L by 3, it is 1 meter. So 1 meter length of the beam near the center is uh, undergoing substantial rotation and because of that rotation the beam bends and bends further and leading to the failure and that particular condition of the beam when it is just at the verge of undergoing failure because of the rotation of one meter length of the beam is what is referred to as the mechanism friends i will stop at this particular stage and you will see more about this uh, in the subsequent classes if you have any questions so you can ask otherwise we can continue our discussion in the next class so thank you very much